Next to me here is the Red Cat 51. It is a small scope, it is light, it is easy to use. It is the perfect beginner telescope for astrophotographers. And it has been wildly popular. The current version, this is the original version, but now it's the Red Cat 3. It comes with all sorts of en enhancements, like in particular an internal focuser, and it costs around 900 US dollars. So it's definitely not cheap. But still, because of its ease of use, it is the weapon of choice for many beginners and even the weapon of choice for advanced astrophotographers when they're going uh, to do some remote imaging, I mean, some imaging in remote dark places, or when their larger telescopes are giving them issues and frustrating them and they need a, re a reprieve, they need something to relax with, and then they will turn to those small telescopes. I am no exception. But what about its larger cousin, the Newtonian telescope? So this is actually a small Newtonian telescope. Uh, it has an aperture of 150 millimeters compared to the aperture of 50 millimeters from our small refractor. And it costs roughly the same price, around 950 US dollars with its included coma corrector. And those small Newtonians can cost even less. The one that I have in the background there, uh, as part of this dual telescope, was I think 450 US dollars when I bought it, although I did have to do a lot of upgrades to it. And I have documented my journey if you're interested. So Newtonians have the potential of being cheaper than small refractors, but how much better are they? And so for today, we are going to make those telescopes fight against one another to see, like, okay, they're roughly the same price. And to be clear, I'm only going to be comparing this one out of my uh, dual scope Franken scope here. So uh, only one of those telescopes will be pitted against the uh, Red Cat here. So the Red Cat 51 with its 50 millimeters or 51 millimeters aperture and 250 millimeters focal length for a focal ratio of f4.9 against this small Newtonian with its aperture of 150 milli millimeters, its focal length of uh, 580 millimeters for a focal ratio of f3.8. Oh, and by the way, I'm Quiv the Lazy Geek. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new and if you like this kind of video, you can like the video, also subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So on the face of it, the Newtonian has the advantage. It has more aperture, it has a faster focal ratio, which is linked to more ap aperture, and it achieves that by having more focal lengths, meaning that it can zoom into objects more. But how much of an advantage is it? So what I decided to do is to point both of the telescopes on the same night at the same time on a small target that has a lot of detail so we could compare the resolution of both of them. And uh, I chose the target of M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's also very interesting because just as I was preparing this video by taking the data, I saw that Lucomatico, so Luke from the Lucomatico channel, released a video where he compared his very large SCT to his very large refractor. And so Luke already did the same exercise for big telescopes. I'm doing the same exercise for small telescopes. Now, I want to compare mostly the resolution of those uh, telescopes. Obviously, in terms of SNR, uh, again, this one will have the big advantage. And I want to have like somewhat comparable field of views before I crop into the M51 galaxy. And so I chose to use the ASI, uh, what is it, 585 MC Pro sensor here that has a tiny sensor with relatively small pixels of 2.9 micrometers. I really like the sensor because it allows you to kind of dig into the details while sacrificing a little bit of per pixel signal to noise ratio. And for this one, I chose the ESI 2600 MC Duo, which is an APS-C size sensor with larger 3.76 micrometer uh, size pixels, uh, as I recall. But with those set setups, we actually achieve roughly the same field of view, except that uh, this Red Cat, in theory, has 2.39 arc seconds resolution per pixel. And this one here has 1.39, I think, arc seconds are 34 arc seconds per pixel. So there is a difference between the two of one arc second per pixel. How bad could that be? We're about to find out. So what I did is I set up those telescopes to image on M51 on the same night. It was one of the very rare clear nights that I had uh, in recent me memory. It's been horrible weather here in Tokyo and we are now entering the rainy season. So yeah, not great. But in the end, I let them uh, basically spend the whole night on the same target. And 
At the end of it, I noticed that the Red Cat had captured 20 minutes more data than the Newtonian, and this is likely due to the synchronized dithering that the Newtonian had to do with its uh, brother uh, from the dual scope setup, but that's something else. Which means that I got, I believe, only, because there was a lot of clouds and stuff, only around 165 minutes of imaging with this one, and around uh, 185 minutes of imaging time with that one. So they're very close. I also made sure that uh, we I guided both via an off-axis guider, so I have a small off-axis guiding camera here, and the of course the ZWASI uh, 2600 MC Duo has a, a guiding chip, an off-axis uh, off guider, uh, chip integrated so that we had the best possible guiding. The guiding figures during the night were roughly 0.45 to 0.5 arc seconds RMS uh, for the uh, refractor. Although it got significantly worse in the morning when clouds really started to roll in and uh, M51 was much, much closer to the horizon as expected. And similarly here, I got roughly 0.7 arc seconds uh, guiding throughout the night, except that it became uh, significantly worse again in the early morning. But I kept the frames. We're going to compare the two. Both, of course, are taken with a simple luminance filter. So that is as much as an apples to apples comparison that we are making. But to figure out the rest of it, we need to get inside and look at the results because I have already taken the exposures, stacked them, drizzled them, I'll get to that, that in a moment, and we are ready to compare them. So follow me inside for that. Oh, before you do so, again, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome to the channel. Like the video, that simple click makes the a whole amount of difference. So thank you so much for doing that. And also leave a comment down below to tell me like how much of a difference do you expect between the two? Do you expect a small difference or a very large difference? And the uh, amount of difference, whether it's towards the very small side or the very large side, might surprise you. So be ready for that. <laughs> oh, and while you're at it, if you want to support the channel more directly and you're planning on buying anything from like Agena Astro or High Point Scientific or First Light Optic or even anything, absolutely anything from Amazon, if you do so after clicking the links that I have down in the description, it helps me out at no cost to you. And of course, I have all of the links to the equipment used for this comparison down in the video description. And finally, if you want to even support me more directly, you can join the channel as a paid Patreon member. It makes a huge amount of difference. And same thing, you can join the channel as a member of the channel. That's the join button next to the subscribe button. And my Patreon supporters and YouTube members, you make the channel possible. You know it. I say it every time and I cannot thank you enough. And we are inside and we are ready to look at the results. So obviously, I'm looking at the stacked images and both have been drizzled because I dithered every five minutes and all of my exposures were 60 seconds long. And therefore, I was able to drizzle for doubling the resolution, well, to some extent, uh, of the image while stacking in PixInsight. And we'll be able to see the results. Now, I also noticed something while I was stacking. I noticed that there were uh, star trails in the center of my frame, so where M51 is located, for my Newtonian telescope, whereas in one of the corners, the stars were perfectly sharp. And I assume it's because my Newtonian, uh, the collimation, was bad, and I had spent so much time the day before aligning my Frankenscope, so I assume while I was doing that, the collimation went bad, and I didn't fix it. So. The Newtonian here is at a disadvantage. And yet, we all know, like from experience, that uh, the Newtonian should perform better than the refractor. The question is only by how much, because, you know, uh, 150 millimeters aperture versus 51 millimeters aperture, like, duh, what are you even doing this test for? It's to see the difference and what this simple one arc second. Uh, per pixel difference makes. And just to give you a quick overview of how it would look like, this is on M51. We have in uh, yellow the Newtonian field of view with the uh, APS-C size sensor. And in red, we have the refractor field of view with a much smaller sensor with smaller pixels of the 585. So all of this makes sense, very similar field of views. Uh, what is going to be different, of course, is the resolution. We have 1.34 arc seconds per pixel for the Newtonian, which is what I have ha now, with a DAWS limit, basically the maximum optical resolution of the telescope, of a lower 0.77 arc seconds. Uh, so it is Indeed, like our resolution is within the DAWs limit, as it is higher than the DAWs, DAWs limit. So that makes sense. 
Now let's look at the same uh, result with the uh, REDCat 51. Here we can see that our resolution is 2.39 arc seconds per pixel, so like this one arc second difference, and the DOS limit is still 2.27 arc seconds. Uh, for the optics, just a smaller aperture means that the maximum resolution that you can grasp, that you can reach for, is limited uh, more than with a much larger aperture like the Newtonian. Still, our resolution is above the DAWs limit, so we shouldn't be hitting that, and if anything is going to be our, an issue is the seeing, but at those scales the seeing shouldn't be that much of a, of a problem either. Plus the drizzling kind of helps with this kind of stuff. So let's look, without further ado, into PixInsight. Here is the result. Can you guess which one is the refractor, which one is the Newtonian? Uh, and yeah, it's kind of very obvious, at least to me. Uh, just for information, those images, they're the final stacks with a dynamic crop to center on the galaxy. We've removed the background with Graxpert and done a spectrophotometric color calibration to have decent colors, and then a screen transfer function to just be able to see what's in there. That's it. We didn't do anything more. And what can we see knowing that the Newtonian was somewhat poorly collimated, and the refractor had 20 minutes more exposure time <laughs> throughout the night? Uh, yeah, the refractor on the left, the Newtonian on the right, it's not even a comparison, right? It's even looking from afar, the Newtonian has noticeably more details. I mean, duh, it makes sense, right? But still, I did not expect the difference to be that large. Come on, look at those two images, completely, completely different. And uh, we can zoom in, but before I zoom in, I'm also going to zoom out the whole size. Uh, there's like this weird mottle uh, pattern for the uh, red cat, and I don't think this has to do with the signal to noise ratio, although the red cat has a lower signal to noise ratio due to its much slower focal ratio. So that's something to keep in mind, but also the sensor uh, when I used it at too high a gain uh, during that night, so that's due to the sensor. But still, uh, there, there is a noticeable, especially if we look like in the in the tail here, as well as in the, uh, the tail of the galaxy uh, there, there is a noticeable signal to noise ratio difference between the two. The Newtonian has an advantage. And when I zoom in, the Newtonian has an advantage in the resolution as well, because this is with the galaxy zoomed in. And I mean, I don't even have to comment, right? It's night and day between the two. And this is far, far more than I expected in terms of the difference. I expected a difference, obviously, but the, 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 the question was how much? And the answer is apparently a lot. And I'm really surprised actually by this result. It's very, very interesting. Now, of course, we need to check with Blur Exterminator to see if we can try and enhance those results here, see how much is going to be enhanced per image and what the end results are. So let's do it. And now I've applied Blur Exterminator only on the refractor image on the left. This is the uh, before and this is the after. Obviously a huge difference, but even then the refractor can't really hold a candle to the Newtonian. Uh, there are some uh, streaks here like that link features together, like there's this weird little square here where we can see it's something very separate on the Newtonian. The Newtonian very simply was able to resolve things much more than the refractor. And yeah, it's something to think about when you're buying your telescope. Refractors, they're very convenient, but yeah, they do have their limitations. And reflectors like this Newtonian here, they require collimation. I'm a victim of poor collimation here. And they require some knowledge and savoir-faire and uh, cleaning the mirrors, that kind of stuff more work, but then for the same price, definitely the results, at least on small targets, show a big difference. Let's try to apply Blur Exterminator to the Newtonian image on the right as well. And here we go, this is the result, and we have the uh, before and after. And again, like the, there's a lot of detail that is now available within M51, despite M51 not being the best target for a small Newtonian, let alone a small refractor. And the Newtonian again comes out on top, like very handily. And this is just with uh, less than three hours of data from Tokyo, which overall I think it's pretty impressive.
So what are your thoughts on this? Like, obviously, we expected a difference, and I'm surprised that the difference is so large. Are you surprised as well? Let us know down in the comments. And I'd also like you to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, in which case, welcome. And of course, you can like, subscribe the video, etc. But that's basically it for today. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.